Hello Jaguars, this is Fahad. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video, uh, partly because, you know, the market was sort of uh, flatlining after Brexit and so the opportunities were getting limited. And the second reason was simply I was on vacation, so that kind of pushed me back a little bit also in terms of uh, continuing to do these videos. So here I am back again. Um, this time I want to take a look at Symantec. Now, just before I started this video, um, I issued a trade alert to buy uh, October 21 calls, which is right here. The volume on that was 72. When I issued the alert, looks like you guys are all jumping into this with the volume now 1,200 contracts already. And so uh, this alert was issued just a few minutes ago. Um, so here's what I'm looking at. Uh, once again, we're going to evaluate this particular opportunity based on the same three-prong approach that we do it all the time. It's the core of what we do in, in Jaguar Analytics. So uh, fundamentals, technicals, and the option activity. So we're going to start off from technicals first, okay? The, um, on the technical side, so here's the daily chart, right? It came down hard in early 2016, and then it bounced sharply from here. What was the reason why it was coming down and why it, uh, why it bounced sharply? I will get to those in just a bit and later in the, in the video, but for now, this is what matters. On technically, from purely from a technical standpoint, so here's, we have, here we have a beautiful consolidation right here. And what you will notice is it comes up to about 21.25 or 21.30, and then it pulls back to 20. And then again, and then again. It's a beautiful consolidation. So this is a classic example of a very high volume breakout. This was back in June, very high volume breakout, followed by a two month long consolidation or a month and a half long consolidation. As a result, the MACD line has corrected from overbought levels to now neutralized. The RSI line has, has come down a little bit and it's now neutralized. If I draw, draw a trend line here in RSI, connect this dot versus this dot, you'll see the RSI is starting to break out. You can see the MACD is giving a bull cross right over here. And both of these, I believe, is precursor to stock breaking out from here. So I think it breaks out from here and it's going to run higher. Now, this is, by the way, is reporting earnings tonight after market close. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of speculative in nature because of that, because earnings are coming out tonight. So we'll see what it performs. But I'm looking at a breakout into the stock, and I think it's going to go up to about here, 2335. 2330 to 2335 is my target. So how do I get my target all the way up to here based on purely technically speaking? You have to basically convert this daily chart into a weekly chart. So if I go here, I take a look at this, you'll see that here's this massive volume of price congestion right here. Okay, so this is about to call it between 19 and 21, 25 level. As it starts to break out from here, from this consolidation, the next most logical answer is this, uh, con uh, is this congestion area right here, which was basically the bottom from going all the way back to a year ago from March of last year. So this price over volume congestion comes up right around here, 2330, right here. So this is my, what my target is right here. I think it gets there. I think it's going to probably pause and consolidate again at that particular time. On weekly chart, MACD is still powering higher, and RSI is not overbought yet. RSI still has a ways to go until we see a touch of 70 or higher. So that's how I get to my target of about 2335, which is right over here. This, this air pocket, this big air pocket that's coming up between two congestion level based on volume over price. So that's my technical target and, and, and the view on the, on the charts. Now, on the option side, it caught my attention today when I was looking at it earlier, a large block of 30,000 January 17, 24 strike calls were bought for 42 cents. So if I, let me just give you a snapshot of what that looks like. So this is a picture from LiveVol. So right here you will see um, at First in the morning they came out at 10.55 and they sold a block. This was sold. They sold a block of August 21 puts, which are right at the money puts. They sold it for 55 cents when the bid and ask was 53 times 67. So they sold it just right around where the bid price was. They collected 550,000 put premium or credit for that. And then two hours later they came out and they bought 30,000 
of January 17, 24 strike calls and the bought it for 42 cents, a penny below the offer price when the bid and ask was pretty wide on this one, 25 cents times to 43 cents. I'm sure a lot of traders on Twitter, Sphere, and other places caught the actions. That's why you see the volume on this now in January 17 month. Um, January 17, uh, 24 strike calls is now 35,000. The original block was bought for 42 cents, 30,000 contracts, and I think a lot of traders jumped into it, and now you see the volume around higher 35,000. I don't want to follow this because this seems a little bit too far out of money for me, even though there's 169 days to perform this. You know, but this is approximately what uh, three dollars on twenty-one dollar stock. You know, it's about fifteen percent, fourteen point two percent out of money. So even though, and and also it's below the delta. I usually look for a delta of point three zero or higher. The delta on this is point two four. So all those reasons, I don't want to follow this action. I just wanted to go something that's higher debt delta, that's slightly in the money or right at the money. And I wanted to go with something that will cover the earnings as well as some other conferences that are coming up in which the company will be presenting in the next uh, three months. And that's why I went with October 21 strike calls, which are right here. So this is what my recommendation is. So we got very, very big option activity. I mean, the total call volume on this stock today is 13 and a half times, 13 and a half times daily average with approximately, what, well, what is it, about $1 $1.3 million worth of call premiums bought and 550000 worth of put premiums sold, all ahead of earnings tonight after the market close. So the options are hot, the technicals are breaking out, or are looking to break out, and the target is 2335 So what is it on the fundamental side that gets me excited? So... <clears throat> I'm going to point out a couple things over here that on the surface that may not be that may not be uh, available that may not be so easily readable by many uh, by many uh, fundamental uh, watchers or uh, or reviewers. So in this particular case what I want to do is I want to actually walk you through through this chart and the events that have taken place in the last year and a half to try to tell you a story. And then as you hear this story, it will start to become clear to you what is the excitement behind this stock, okay? So it all starts from April 2015, right over here. You see this big giant spike? What happened then was the CEO of the company uh, resigned. The CEO of the company basically, as I think it was more or less, he was more or less fired from the board, although the, the you know, the... Uh, uh, the press release would say that basically the, uh, he took the retirement and whatnot. But anyways, this CEO had been for a long, long time, was trying to turn the company around, and it just wasn't working. And so the, the CEO took off. This was in April 2015, and the stock jumped big time on that at that particular time. As the new leadership came in, that changed the entire plan going forward. The first thing happened, so this was right here, April 2015, the CEO resigned. A month later, in May 2015, um, Symantec announced that it is going to be creating a brand new product for advanced threat protection. Now, by the way, if some of you guys don't know what Symantec does, Symantec owns the company called Norton Networks, which is a virus protection software that many, many of you probably use uh, in, your, uh, in your computers at home, in your laptops, and so on. It is widely used in all kinds of places, uh, except that it's been a pretty... It's a big cash cow. It's a lot of free cash flow, but very anemic, very slow growth. There's not much going on. And so, um, and so back in May, the company immediately, one month after the, after the CEO came in, the company announced a new direction, which was that instead of actually continuing to target what they used to do, which was SAP, SAP stands for their core software called Symantec Endpoint Protection. SEP, which means the uh, this is basically exactly the software that you guys probably have installed on your computer, SEP. They wanted to get ahead of the threats that take place, the, uh, which is basically the entire dynamics of what's driving the security business in the, uh, in the, in the corporate sector. So they wanted to go from endpoint protection, used, which is called SEP, to advanced threat protection, ATP. So it was a shift in the business, all right? Go from SAP to ATP. ATP means advanced threat protection. That was announced right over here around May 
of 2015. But it was just an announcement made, but no product was launched. So it was still ways away. And then gradually going all the way out right here in October. See this big giant spike? This is when the actual company launched the advanced threat protection software. And so the first quarter, it was announced around late October. So the first full quarter of those results of advanced threat protection was not available until the company announced the first earnings. Now we move back to daily chart, which is right here. The first quarter of full earnings was not announced until right here, which was in May of 2016. So, and guess what? When that happened, the, there were 1.2 million subscriptions sold of ATP um, software at 100%, actually well above 100% the price point that they were charging their customers for SEP. This is very, very important. This is I'm trying to get to a get to a com, a, get to an argument over here, so, so you can understand exactly why I believe the forward earnings estimates are actually low. The the SEP, which for a long, long time has been their core business, which is Norton business, the ATP, which was launched last October and Q1 of 2016 was their first full quarter of launch, showed that 1.2 million subscriptions were sold in the first full quarter at a total at a total price point that was well over 100% higher than the SAP or SEP okay that means higher margins and much more robust demand now what happens is that Symantec uh, software is sold is installed in 110 million devices worldwide and their goal is that the last quarter was just 1.1 million or 1.2 million subscription sales of ATP. This is all going to be eventually sold to all 110 million devices that are outstanding. And because the price point is higher by two by more than 100 basis points, by more than 100 percent than the selling price of SAP, this carries significantly higher margin. This is exactly what RBC Capital discussed right here. Now you see this is where the difference comes in. If I simply show you a whole bunch of uh, just commentary on analyst reports, it, a lot of it wouldn't make any sense. But I try to pick out points in these analyst reports that actually really are true, eye, truly eye-catching because it, it sheds a light on the future. So focus on what is stated right over here. This is the paragraph. ATP sold over 1.2 million subscriptions in its first full quarter of availability with price points well above 100% of current SAP recurring revenues while expanding seats and has fiscal year 2017 pipeline that is already 100 plus million. Now, this last line is even more important. In consumer security, 95% of U.S. Norton customers renew automatically with worldwide automatic renewals expected by fall. What you're going to see basically is there's 110 million installed base out there of semantic. These guys are going to be renewing their subscriptions come this fall, which is in what? You know, typically, well, fall starts actually from late August and it goes until November. Um, these guys are going to be renewing their Norton security software and going to be installing ATP that is going to replace SEP, which an ATP carries significantly higher margins and higher price point. What does that mean for the stock? That tells me the forward consensus are very, very low. Why is the forward consensus is very low? Because simply because of the chart that I like to come back to, which is right over here. Um, forget about what happened, by the way, in 2015. These are the forward earnings consensus view. This, this right here, the drop right here, has to do with some assets that were disposed of, and so basically it were removed. They were underperforming assets, a separate story. But the point is, look at how in the, this orange line is your fiscal year 2017, how it has been marching higher. Actually, it's 2018. How at the start of the year, this was $1.28, and now it is sitting at around $1.43, so it has actually gone up by about 10%. I believe there is still a lot more to go on the forward earning estimates to go higher because we're talking 100 plus million install base, and only 1.2 million was actually sold in the last quarter. So there's still significant headwind or a significant tailwind, I should say, in front of the stock that they have to, they yet to have take advantage of. So that's what gets my interest. Now another thing that I wanted to show you, which is uh, which is just a 
just a note over here that's a separate bull case on this this has to do with the restructuring cost all right back right over here see the sharp spike right over here this was in february of 2015 the sharp spike and then subsequent sell-off what happened right over here this happened a, a day or two days after the after the earnings was issued in february of 2016 Silver Lake Capital, which is the activist shareholder or bot, they saw what was happening. They saw the new leadership came in, the new CEO came in. They saw that the company is launching in a brand new product. And so the Silver Lake Capital, which is an activist shareholder, took advantage of it and they bought 500, initially they bought half a billion or $500 million worth of stock in the company, which is a pretty good significant position for a $13 billion company. All right. Later on, I think it was around, I have to double check, but I think it was around right over here in, in, in April or May sometime. They doubled their position size, and now Silver Lake Capital owns $1 billion of the stock in the company, which represents about 8% of the, all, uh, the entire outstanding float of the company. Now, two months after Silver Lake actually accumulated $1 billion worth of stock, see this giant spike that happened in June, this huge spike in the stock? That happened because the company, you can just take a look at it, by the way, the same picture from, um, from, uh, uh, from StockCharts.com. This is Dick's big giant spike you see here on very high volume right here. This happened because the company acquired uh, Blue Coat Systems. Blue Coat Systems is exactly um, in the same business where the company is targeting, which is Advanced Threat Protection, ATP. Now, when that company, when that, uh, when that acquisition was announced, usually you see the acquirer stock falls on a large acquisition like this. But in this case, Symantec stock actually ripped higher on very, very high vol volume. Why? Because the acquisition is immediately accretive. The most important takeaway from that is this. When the company announced the acquisition, in the press release, they said that they see between between Symantec and Blue Coat Systems combined, when they start to take out the overlapping cost structure from the, from the combined company, they see approximately $450 million in, in cost synergies coming. Well, guess what? The day they mentioned that, well, as soon as they announced that, there was a press conference that, was, that, that happened right over here. Um, and Silver Lake Capital, which is the activist shareholder, they did their own analysis, and they came out with a number that was much higher. Silver Capital believes that the total net cost synergies are going to be double of what the company is saying if they do it the right way. Not $450 million, but, ex but about $900 million. In fact, some targets that were thrown out there was as much as $1 billion. Now... What the company, if the company announces earnings tonight and they actually increase those cost synergy targets because they have been reviewing this transaction for now about two, two and a half months and Silver Lake was making this, that argument right over here, there is a chance that tonight when it reports earnings or if not tonight in the coming weeks, the Symantec is going to increase its synergy target of cost synergies target from... Uh, from 300 million, which is on the blue coat side, and 150 million, which is on semantic side, so net net 450 million dollars, they might increase that to maybe 550, 600 million dollars, or even higher. If that happens, it's going to move the needle, meaning it's going to move the forward consensus estimates higher. And when that happens, you're going to see the stock correspond is, is going to rise accordingly with it. So you have. Here's the bottom line on the fundamentals. You have two specific stories following in two different places, and both of them point to the upside. One has to do with a brand new product, ATP, that was launched um, late last year, and the Q1 of this year was the first full quarter when we saw what the results of that was. It is selling at 100% higher price point, and it has been installed on only 1.2 million machines. When the total installed base out there is 100 million, much of it is going to be renewing their subscription. By the way, including myself, I also use Norton Networks or, 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 or Norton Works. They will be renewing their subscriptions this fall. So there's a huge pent-up demand that's potentially coming their way in the next six to nine months. And the second thing is the activist shareholder believes that if they do, if they do it the right way, they can, they can take out a lot more synergies than the company is originally guiding. So based on all of this, I believe the forward consensus estimates is too low. 
The last thing I want to throw at this, just, just basically just icing on the cake, is this article which caught my attention. This is from October 27, 2015. So it's quite old, but it is just now finally coming into picture. This was posted on CRN, uh, which is a technology, uh, you know, the, 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 the website that follows the, cha you know, the, uh, the, the changing uh, technology trends and whatnot. This article was published in October 2015, just in time when the company issued Advanced Threat Protection Solution. And right here is the note. Symantec takes on FireEye Palo Alto Network with new Advanced Threat uh, Protection Solutions. After that, when that article was put out, there was a news, which, is, which was never confirmed, but there was a news that Symantec was starting to build stronger ties with Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure Pro is the second biggest, after Amazon, is the second biggest provider of public cloud, okay? And so this, uh, this launch of Advanced Threat Protection Solution is the first phase of the company ever in the history of the company to actually start targeting who? The enterprise customers. Now, going back to the, uh, the article that I showed, uh, where did it go? I have to pull it up from here. I might have closed it actually already. Um, but in the same note from RBC that I showed earlier, uh, one thing I wanted to point out was the RBC makes the case that in the same note that there are 330,000 enterprise customers out there that Symantec has. And I don't believe, based on all the research that I've done, the Symantec Advanced Threat Protection has actually even started scratching the surface of those. So they're going to start upselling their ATP product to enterprise sus customers as well. So you got both the retail, which is 100 million install base, as well as the enterprise customer of 330,000. And it's going, to, it's going to be in the front and center and target directly their customer base, which is Palo Alto Network and FireEye. So that's another, uh, another icing on the cave, which I don't believe is built into the consensus view. The last thing, the last comment that I will make is this. You know, what is the valuation of FireEye? It runs losses. It does not make a lot of money. We know that, right? What is the valuation of Palo Alto Network? It trades at 80, 85 times earnings. I mean, it's a, it's a ridiculous valuation and whatnot. Here is Symantec that has an earnings power of $1.45 next year, which has been gradually rising in the last couple of weeks. All right. And so if I take the $21 stock and divide it by $1.45, it's trading at 14.5 times earnings, which quite frankly seems stupid cheap to me. It's not a company that, is, that trades a ridiculous valuation compared to peers. Now it's in the same business as Palo Alto Network and others, and it trades a stupid cheap valuation. It may even become a buyout target. Who knows? Maybe Microsoft Azure or Amazon or somebody will come and just buy the company and then, you know, with a new leadership in place. So a lot of moving parts over here and all of them present a very bull case over here. So I like the stock. I like buying these October 21 strike calls. Looks like the volume is now on this 1700 and they were buying the January 17, uh, January 17, 24 strike calls. So there's my play. Buy the stock here or buy call options here and your target is 23.35, which is right here. The next volume of price congestion, which is all the way up at 23.35. All right. That's my play.